The most challenging aspect of Donington is the uh, transition from our headlining show, which we've been performing uh, around the world and specifically in the United States the last couple months, uh, which is very hev heavily oriented towards lights and we have projections accompanying the show and uh, it's, it's a whole s another element of sight com combined with the sound. And uh, we're really standing up on the audio legs here at Donington. There, it, we're playing in daylight. We'll be wearing our glasses. Copper tone will be uh, flowing. And I think we're really concentrating on just performing well and having it sound good. And uh, that's the, the, the stage is very different. It's foreign for us. We ha we've had a custom design stage we've been running around on, and it's different. So, you know, the cha there's a, quite a few challenges, <laughs> actually. And uh, not getting blown over by the wind, perhaps, you know, which is raging today. But uh, we like challenges, and uh, we'll take a, you know, a Donington challenge anytime. Now, on your previous LPs, you always wrote in a, in a fictional mode. But for Empire, you dealt with very real, everyday subjects. Why did that change in our lyrical stance come about? Well, we've all, actually always written our albums uh, from personal experience. Some songs have been based on uh, fictional uh, instances, but I, I think quite a bit of it's been from a personal standpoint. Um, obviously, the, the mind crime storyline was uh, bits and pieces of fiction mixed with uh, reality. But on this album, Empire, we wanted to do something different again. And we uh, purposefully uh, approached the record with that in mind, uh, sort of looking at what's inside of us and really concentrating on that as far as subject matter, rather than looking for outside sources. I think the, the appeal of the Empire album has been a combination of, uh, combination of factors, one of which is just our persistence, I think, of uh, releasing albums and touring behind them. Uh, that has been something that has been very much building the, the ground base of Queens, right? But I think uh, the continual opening of doors, particularly at radio and uh, the likes of MTV, which has uh, really blown open, you know, the band. I think having us popping into people's uh, living rooms on their TV set certainly is something that escaped us in the early days of our career. And uh, fortunately now, uh, it's, you know, we've been able to capture, I think, kind of the essence of Queensryche in some of, in our more recent uh, couple years of video making. Mm -hmm. So, it's just been an ongoing process, and fortunately, I guess, the material as well, you know, we've had, uh, tried to keep a standard of material that people are now mm -hmm. interested in, so we're happy. I think that our message really is just a, a reflection. Is, I, I think how we kind of, we sort of act as a mirror, I think. And uh, I think a lot of our fans can find things that they relate to in our albums with their lives and things going on around them, maybe uh, whether it be problems or, or uh, things that they feel just they feel good about that uh, you know we talk about in the records. Uh, I, I don't think that we try and preach really with the band. I think that all we really do is just kind of uh, absorb life as we go along and try and present it uh, back to the people mm -hmm. in our own unique way. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to think it's constructive. I don't think we have a destructive uh, message you know, with the band. I think even if we look at something that perhaps is a bit negative or with a cynical edge towards it, it's always trying in the end analysis to be a bit constructive. It's true that rebellion has kind of gone hand in hand with rock, but uh, I think we're just trying to write some good tunes that kind of reflect our state of mind at any given point that we're making an album. And it's kind of about what's going on around our lives and, and what is important to us. And I think, uh, it, I, I hope it's not, uh, it ever gets to the point where bands feel that they have to write about, you know, Satan or rebellion or sex exclusively, you know, to be rock and roll. I, I, I think uh, it, 
of course, if they just continue doing that, we'll continue to be very unique from the rest of them. So go, go right on ahead. <laughs> Advice to new young bands yes, starting yes. out? Right, right about, about sex, violence, and, and rebellion sex. with no constructive uh, yeah. ending. Ricky Rackman here backstage at Castle Donington, England for Monsters of Rock weekend. And right now I'm here with Jeff Tate, the singer of Queensryche. And uh, you guys are about to go on stage a little bit later this afternoon. Um, you pretty excited about playing here? Um, no. <laughs> I know, <it's> honestly. <laughs> I mean, aren't you familiar? Like, did you always hear about all the big Monsters of Rock shows that they've had here? Or? Yeah, I've heard about it. But did you ever think that one day you'd be playing them or never really gave it much thought? Well, it's, it's a good position to be in because it gives you massive amounts of exposure rather than doing your own tour for a month slogging around England. You can just play one show and you're done. But I like intimate small shows, and a festival situation isn't very pleasing for in my opinion. As opposed to playing in front of 80,000 people like tonight. Yeah, it's, it's more from, from the standpoint of let's let as many people as possible see the band and then get the hell out. <laughs> I mean that in all due respect. It's not like, you know, a pure business move, but uh, uh -huh. we've already been over here once and we brought our own show and did a uh, massive tour of England and Europe already uh, this last winter. So this is round two for us. Yeah. We'll be back talking to the guys from Queensryche a little bit later, as well as the other bands partaking in the Monsters of Rock Festival today at Castle Donington as MTV's Monsters of Rock weekend continues.